Happy Wednesday, kittens. It is the 14th of August, 2013, and this is not a podcast, episode 36. I am your host, Amanda, also known as Wit on Ravelry, and so nitpicky on Plurk, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and now on YouTube. So, it's been two weeks again since I last talked to you, and I've missed you all. It's been very strange not recording weekly. It seems longer in between than it really is, and usually by the time I hit the one-week mark, I think it should be two, and so by the time I get to two weeks, it's like, man, I haven't recorded in forever. Hopefully, it will not be too noisy here today. Um, My usual method of keeping my children quiet is not available to me today. Um, They misbehaved a lot last night and lost their screen time period today. Like, no computer, no movies, no games, no nothing. So they're upstairs playing. They may be a little loud. And also, it's a beautiful day here today. It is in the high 60s. It's overcast, it's been raining, and I have the windows open. And it can be quite noisy in my neighborhood depending on who's walking by and what's going on. So hopefully it will not interfere too much with recording the podcast today. So, first things first. Socket to Summer will soon be ending. There's just over two weeks left. Um, It will end on the 31st of August. Next time I plan to record is the 28th of the month. And then I'm going to, I think, do a weekly episode after that so that I can do the prize drawing and not make you wait two weeks. But the plan as of this point is that I will keep the thread open until the morning of September 1st. And so you have until whenever I remember to log on to Ravelry and to lock the thread to get your entries in. Anything before I lock it is fair game. So if you're lucky, (laughs) I will forget because it'll be a Sunday and I will be too busy to do much about it until closer to lunchtime. But don't count on it because you never know. And as of today, there are 32 entries and it is so exciting. I love whenever I see there's a new message in that thread and I get to see what's in there. And I know that some of you have been having difficulties with your socks. So I'm hoping that you all manage to get a pair done regardless of what size they are and who they're for and that I will get to see you in the finished objects thread. I'm I'm back here cheering for you guys. Let's see, last show I had considered doing, uh, not a segment per se, but talking about things that I really enjoy and share what I thought, things I think you guys might like, since quite a few of you have interests similar to mine. I thought I could do kind of, I don't know, not quite recommendations, but something similar. And there were a couple of new series or channels on YouTube or newish that I thought you guys might want to hear about. And these are things I've been enjoying quite a bit. If you were a fan of the Lizzie Bennett Diaries on YouTube, you might want to check out the autobiography of Jane Eyre or Jane Eyre. It's so far it's been a really interesting series. I'm going to admit that I have never actually read the book. I have it for free on my Kindle. I have not had time to read it. And so I don't know how well it works compared to the book. Like, I can do better with the Lizzie Bennet Diaries because I've read Pride and Prejudice many times, seen it many times. Um, But yeah, I've been enjoying it, and it's definitely made me interested in reading the book now. And I think it's really well done. It's a little creepy, and yeah, it's, it's interesting. And the second one on YouTube is a pretty new channel called Thug Notes. Now... Before you think I'm too crazy, this is another literary channel. It's very interesting so far. It is classic books summarized and explained in thug gangster language. I enjoy the gentleman who does the series. 
and it's funny and I thought he's done really well too like with books that I wasn't sure he would do as well with like Pride and Prejudice I thought he actually hit quite a bit of it on the head so if you want a good laugh and you enjoy seeing that sort of thing I would recommend it it's not child unsafe per se but it may not be the most child friendly channel out there so you may want to consider waiting to watch it until your kids are away but each video is only five to eight minutes long and so far he's done books like the great gatsby he's done pride and prejudice he's he did jane jane Eyre. he's done um lord of the flies <laughs> He, uh, what was the recent ones he did? He's done Great Expectations. He's done a lot of really good books. Did 1984. If you've read a lot of these books and you want to see a kind of humorous takedown of them while still actually getting the point of the books, I would recommend it. I've, I've enjoyed it a lot. So, I think that's about it for kind of yakety yak section here. We can get into the show. It's very content light today. Um, I have been focusing mostly on cross-stitching because all of my friends who started the Summer Sampler before me, or even at the same time as me, or even after me, have all <laughs> been finishing up. There are lawnmowers driving by, I'm sorry. It's uh, my neighborhood's lawn maintenance day. And if you have never lived on a military base, Yes, we get weekly lawn maintenance and they come in with huge crews and they mow all the common areas and it can be kind of noisy. But anyway, content light because I've been focusing on cross stitching trying to get my summer sampler finished. I'm sorry about that. Tala knocked over my iPhone, which is how I've been recording lately. She bumped <laughs> my epic and wonderful setup here. Someday maybe I'll take a picture of it and show you guys how I've been recording lately. But I've got a, a whole mess of a setup here. It's her kennel with a tote full of yarn, with a box, <laughs> with another box, and my phone, and my phone with something behind it to support it sitting up. It's high tech. But anyway, today I have for you a work in progress, a knitting one. I have a little bit of yarn to show you that I'm spinning and then I will show you what I've been doing on my summer sampler. I have no stash acquisitions so I've been doing pretty well with that the last couple of weeks. So let's get started. As the stocking at zombies would say, I have a hoe or a half object, a half finished object. I cast on, cast it on and started Hermione's Everyday Socks which is a pattern by Erica Luter. And I started those right before I recorded last time. And the last time you saw it, I had one sock about halfway done. I think I had just finished the gusset decreases. Well, I have finished oops, this sock. I have not woven in the ends because I'm lazy. Got it all the way done through the toe decreases. It's hard to show off because I'm doing asymmetrical or diff different toes this time. I'm doing ones that match my feet. So this is the one for my right foot. I have a longer pointer toe than a big toe, so and considerably longer. So for me, my toes kind of do this weird thing. Anyway, I tried that out on this one. I'm going to do it on the next one. And so far, I really like how it fits. And I'm excited about it. So I got that done. I took a few days off and then I made myself cast on the second one. And I am currently to, the ribbing is done, and I have one of 10 pattern repeats of the leg completed. So I'm hoping at the rate I've been making myself work on this that by the end of the weekend, I should have a second leg and maybe by the weekend after I should be down past the gusset and I'm hoping to maybe by the next time I record have a fully finished pair of socks which means I would get to say I finished sock it to summer too and that's all I really have going I've been enjoying the pattern it's it's simple it's well written it has a nice effect on variegated yarn and I'm thinking of all those variegated skeins that I kind of 
binged on last fall around this time and I just bought a ton of them especially from another crafty girl and I'm thinking of all the different pairs of Hermione's everyday socks I can cast on now but I'm trying to keep myself rooted in the present which is something I've been working on off and on. Next I have a yarn to spin. I have not done a lot of progress on too many of them. I haven't been spending as much time spinning as I normally do. I usually spin when I'm watching podcasts at my computer. So like my entire spinning station, everything I need is set up on my computer desk. But lately, a lot of my podcasts, like myself, have gone on hiatus or gone to kind of irregular schedules. So I haven't had as many to watch. And trying to get my cross stitching done, I've been forcing myself to spend less time at the computer and more out in my living room so I can work out there. So I don't have any more of that Hanks in the Hood long sparkly bat I was showing you before. I am still in the same color section I was before. I'm definitely experiencing color fatigue with it. That is the section that was black and pink and sparkly. I am almost to the end of it. I think I've got about 12 to 15 more inches of that. And then it's going to start moving over to a bluish color as well. And I have applied one of the two balls of my Pigeon Roof Studios Merino in Magnolia, but the sec the last one I did is very similar looking to the ones I've done before, so I figured it wasn't really worth showing. I still have one more left to ply, and I'm hoping again by next show I'll have finally finished plying and I can show you that, and hopefully it'll have been soaked and everything. What I have done is I started a new spinning project, which shows that maybe I'm getting a little bit too in love. I don't know. I get kind of obsessive about things when I really enjoy them. When I like them, I want to cast on or do a ton of things. And I realize that I've been spreading myself too thin lately. So I'm trying to slowly whittle down the number of projects I'm doing by forcing myself to finish up some before I can um, move on. But anyway, I have... Um, kind of a hodgepodge of Polworth from Spun Right Round that I'm spinning up right now. At the beginning of the year, I did one of those pay it forward type of crafty memes that you see go around every year at the beginning. The post this up and the first five people who claim it have to then post up and, you know, let five other people claim from them something that I have made or done for you. Well, I have not done any of those yet. And I decided to get a start on one of mine, which is a good friend, I'm not going to say who, and I have been spinning some yarn for her. This is the first ply. It's a longer color repeat. I'm doing a fractal ply on this of sorts, and you can kind of see there's green hiding in there, and it goes into blue, blues and pinks, and, it, and there's some purple hiding in there too. But anyway, I got that one done really fast. Like This one took me two days. And then since that time, it has taken me almost a week and a half to start on the second. And I'm almost done with the second, which I'm spinning right now. This is on my shocked high-low spindle. And based on how it's spinning and how heavy it's feeling, I'm almost to the same amount of fiber as on the last one. So I'm thinking this little thing of purple fiber is going to be the end. I'm curious to see how it's going to turn out because I took three different colorways. As I mentioned before, it's all spun right round. And I'm sorry I'm kind of rambly. My uh, son came downstairs, interrupted, and now I'm kind of off my game. <laughs> it's, it's funny how easy it is to get distracted sometimes, but now I can't quite get my head back into it. But anyway, I bought a ton of spun right round fiber. She is... Um, situated very close to me, about an hour, hour and 15 minutes south of me, by Syracuse, New York. And I bought a ton of her fiber because, one, it's pretty, and two, it was Polworth, which I'm pretty good with, and three, um, she's close. What was I even going to go through there? Not my day. But anyway, I bought a ton of these, and I decided that since I want to go to the Cortland Fiber Festival in October, and she's going to be there, I need to use up 
a fair amount of fiber between now and then. And I was thinking about this pay it forward gift that I needed to do for my friend and thinking about her favorite colors and the kind of things she, kinds of things she likes, I realized that I already have a ton of fiber in stash that would work. And I got to wondering, well, what if I combined a bunch of these together, what would happen? So that's what I did. I'm going to show you the mini braids that I rebraided with approximately the other half of these fibers. I took licorice, glow sticks, and lady thunder, which I am 90% sure is based off of the character Stormy from Rainbow Bright. And I decided to try spinning them all together as a single colorway. It's either going to be really awesome or it's going to be really, really weird. I haven't decided which yet, but I think they go okay together. Definitely the first two do. I've been questioning the purple, but I think it'll work. So if you can kind of picture some sort of a crazy pants yarn, they all have different colors of gray in them. These two have the same blue and like these two have the coordinating gray. It's been kind of hard trying to f picture what the end product is going to look like. And if I really like it, I have enough left over that I can spin something for myself too. So that's all I've been really working on for spinning. And then last but not least, I have Stitcher's Corner for you this week. Last show, I did not show you my summer sampler because from the time you had seen it now a month ago till then, I had only completed two squares. I had gotten very slow. The summer sampler stitcher is a lot more complicated in some ways than the spring sampler was. I feel that a lot of the squares have more color in them. There's a lot more stitching per square. It feels just like it was a little bit more than the last one. And because I didn't have much to show you, I didn't want to show it off. Well, I now have completed three weeks, which means the last time you saw it, I was about here, I think with the 4th of July. And then the last time I talked about it, I had finished this square and this square. And I now have three full weeks, plus I've started stitching in the others. I would be a little bit farther along, but last night I was watching a Woody Allen movie, and I do that about once a decade to remind myself that I really genuinely don't like Woody Allen's films. <laughs> Weird thing to do, but so many people love them that I have to, every five to ten years, watch one and remind myself that, no, I really don't like them. So I watched Manhattan last night, anyway. And I realized that I had gotten distracted and miscounted my square, which was this orange one. And I did not get the number in it for that same reason. But the last time I did the square on my spring sampler, I made the exact same mistake. Where in the middle, the repeat doubles and you have a double vertical row. Well, anyway, I felt so smart and I'm like, oh, I know what the pattern is. And I got on autopilot, didn't check my paper again, and then got to the end and realized I was one row off. And so I had to pull out a lot of stitching. And unlike knitting and frogging where you can just rip and it goes out, it's a lot more finicky to take out cross stitch. So I... <laughs> I spent probably 15, almost 20 minutes pulling the stitches out, trying not to break the thread and leave it in a shape that I could reuse it. Well, cursing under my breath. And then I had to stitch it back in. And by the time I got done, I just didn't feel like doing it anymore. So anyway, I am almost done with this. And I'm pretty excited because I'm over halfway. The end is coming. Although that same square I just had problems with is the infamous whale square that quite a few people in my Instagram feed and my friends have been really, really unhappy about doing. Apparently that one's a pain in the butt. Um, apparently that's just gonna be a bad square in general. So, sorry, square 17, you're kind of a pain. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping to get those done. And the Pumpkins have recently released the Halloween sampler that tons of people are getting started on and I really wanna join too but I'm making myself refrain. Um, 
I am getting backed up in a lot of my crafts and I've been in a kind of weird place mentally lately where I'm starting to consider things like, oh gosh, what if I were to pass away tomorrow? How many unfinished things would my husband and my family have to go through <laughs> to, um, you know, to deal with all my stuff? And I've decided that I want to spend most of the rest of this calendar year finishing up things I already have. So the plan after my summer sampler is I'm still going to, at the reduced prices, buy Halloween and the fall sampler, but I'm not going to buy the supplies and I'm not going to cast, I'm not going to cast on for stitching those right away. I am instead going to finally get started on my Woodland 2013 sampler, which I've had this entire time. I haven't started it yet. I've had the supplies, I've had it all wound up, it's all been ready to go. And up until I started that spring sampler, I had not started a single cross stitch. So I've decided to get started on it and to at least try to get caught up with most of the months. That one's more stitching intensive, I think, and the, the squares are larger, but I'm hoping that if I were to focus on it, that I could maybe still start the Halloween sampler or the fall sampler well before Halloween comes around but we'll see because I've been losing out on knitting time due to doing a lot of cross stitch and now that the weather's getting cooler again I'm not so much feeling the cross stitch as much and I want to get back into knitting and I want to get back into spinning but we'll see so I will talk to you in two weeks I have still been working on that prize bag um, it's been taking me longer than I thought because I've been putting a lot of interfacing into it and it takes a long time to turn pieces and it's been a little futzy but I am farther along in it and I'm hoping to in the prize thread get that up soon so talk to you in two weeks and thank you for joining me kittens bye